Anthony, it's great to be here with you again. This is our fourth conference together for mm -hmm. FQXI. We've dealt with uh, uh, multiverse and cosmology, nature of time, nature of information now, uh, nature of the observer versus in events in, in quantum physics. Uh, if you integrate all this together from uh, the FQXI uh, viewpoint, how does this impact the, the understanding that humanity has for, the, for science and the importance of science as we look to the future when we're dealing with such big, abstract subjects? It, it, we're not dealing yeah. with making new uh, computers. We're dealing <laughs> with these fast concepts that seemingly have no practical application, which is why I like it. Mm -hmm. But what, what is the significance of what we're doing? Well, I mean, one of the things I love about you know, FQX and, and being part of it is that people are thinking on such a big scale, you know, thinking about sort of spans of time and, and on a level of conceptuality that you just don't have on an everyday level. And, and when you think about society and sort of where we are as humans and where we are in our solar system and in the universe and in the history of the universe, you know, you, it, you get a fairly different view. So, and especially when we, we've been thinking about observers as part of this conference, you know, it, it's an amazing thing that the universe has gone on for this 13.8 billion years. And a lot of it, you know, at some level unobserved or at least unobserved by things that enjoy the sort of consciousness and appreciation and who get to think about it like we do at FQX. Um, and the question is, you know, is that a, a, a blip in the radar? Are we going to sort of have this glorious time for a little while and then kill each, kill each other <laughs> off and, and, and that's it? And the universe goes back to sleep for another billions and billions of years? Or, you know, is this the great awakening that's going to go on and sort of fill up billions of light years with sentient beings getting to do all this awesome stuff? That, and, and those are hard questions to think about because they, you know, it's about not just who we are now, but who are we going to become? What are our descendants? Are they going to be us? Are they going to be super intelligent AIs? You know, what are they going to be? And what can we sort of do about that now by understanding, you know, what is an observer? What is conscious? What does it matter? And, and those sorts of questions that are part and parcel of what FQX likes to think about, they're strangely becoming important. You know, what is consciousness? You know, is a fascinating question that That's is one of you know, my favorite th that we really would like to know the answer to, but we'd like to know the answer to. We don't have to know the answer to, maybe. But if we're thinking about creating machines that are smarter than us, mm. we better know whether those things are going to be conscious or not. And we don't. Mm. So, FQXI foundational questions when you deal with time, information, multiverse, observers, uh, why are those considered foundational questions? You know, foundational is a, is a sort of word we've given to the questions we think are really cool and interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's the secret. That's the dirty secret of FQX. Um, but, you know, they're, they're, I think at some level things that have to do with, with the, the sort of big questions, the big nature of reality, um, the, the hard problems, you know, the problems that we study, not because they're easy, but because they're hard, as the saying goes, that um, the questions that you have this is... You know, some people, when you really want to get stuff done, you've got this feeling like, let me not think about that, <laughs> right? We're, we are putting exactly it back in the there, opposite. putting it back in there. Um, so it's hard to say exactly what makes something foundational and, and fqx -y, but you sort of know it when we see it. You know, you're like, yeah, that's really cool. I really wanted, I really want, and that's, whoa, that's confusing. Yeah. You know, that's the kind of question. We'll one make. one way of defining it in, in a funny way is that uh, we, we talk about the things that you can't get a normal science grant for. That is certainly, the, <laughs> that is certainly one way to define it, it by exclusion. But that covers a lot of things, right. and, it, okay. and it's tricky to find the ground that is still science and still rigorous and still, you know, you can talk about it with real scientific right. methodology, um, and yet is far enough out sort of on the edge of, of what people can think about that it's hard to get conventional funding. And, and you have a core way of thinking, which is generally physics, yeah. which underlies this approach. There, there are other ways of knowing in the world, you know, arts and humanities and right. biological, but the core of this is physics, which is one view of the world to view these kinds of questions. That's right, yeah.